What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Nega Cube. Otherwise translated as a negative cube. It has the, the negatives. Oh, I like Panharmonicon. It's kind of like Venser yesterday or Soul Herder. I like I like Behold the Multiverse as well. I think Panharmonicon's a pretty sweet build around, so I'm gonna take that and see what happens. Let's see what happens. What do we got here? What does this thing do again? Attaching all the things to it. Got it. Got it. Artifact or creature triggers a thing. This is a cast trigger, so not enter the battlefield trigger. But I think if we're going for artifacts, Psy is pretty good. Plus there's a lot of blue cards that we want to be. Oh, if, if it isn't garbage, Andy himself. Yeah, but do you have any lemonade? You know, I don't, but I do have some lemon lime soda stream soda. With 50% fewer calories. It's not diet, but it's 50% fewer calories, like half sugar. And I added some grenadine to it. So it is a Shirley Temple. And that's that's pretty okay with me. I feel like that's an adequate substitute. Did you ever just start streaming? You just started. You're like, hey, I just started streaming. And then you feel a rumble in your stomach and you're like, boy, I hope I don't have massive diarrhea while I'm streaming. Not like it's going to happen as you're streaming, because obviously I'll just literally just go run to the bathroom if necessary, but I hope that it doesn't come while I'm streaming, because I feel like that's just miserable for everybody, you know? I heard you were playing some spreadsheet simulator. <laughs> well, maybe. Literally every time I shit my pants on the daily. It's rough, because I'm like, oh, God. I had leftover... Um, I don't know if you guys have ever been to Cheesecake Factory. I actually enjoy Cheesecake Factory. Their dishes are a little heavy, but I think they're good. Um, hold on a second. Huh. And um, I kind of just want Master Transmitter, to be honest. Master Transmitter was one of my favorite cards back in the day. So I had Chicken Madeira from the Cheesecake Factory, and it was it's delicious. It's a delicious meal. But I'm always like, is this going to affect me? in my future. Witching Well. I mean, there's some good artifacts to be picking up here. I like Witching Well. It also triggers Panharmonicon. We get to scry four. You ever, uh, you ever scryed four before? Yeah, I don't think so. Cheesecake Factory is a recipe for bubble gut. Oh, it's 100%. There's no, yeah, that's like the, yeah, 100% true. Booble Guts. Is is blue-green an archetype for uh, Panharmonicon, you think? This guy triggering twice is pretty nuts. I mean, there's nothing else in here. Ultimate Price is not bad. I'm going to take the Ridge Scale Tusker, because I do think that card is pretty, pretty bananas. Oh, gee, Rick. I like bananas. Which well? Witching, witching, witching well? You know what they say, heavy dish, diarrhea, Mitch. Do they say that? God, I must be down on my... I'm just, I think I'm just behind on my lingo. Anyway, the point is... I hope we go, I hope things go okay. Yeah, that is an old saying. Uh, that's it's probably before my time. I just didn't know, you know. I just had no idea. What can you do? What can you do? 
we can wait for this sixth pick here. I don't know what the holdup is. I also don't know what our deck is doing right now. Master Transmuter uh, was one of the first cards I ever wrote about when I was writing, when I started writing articles. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control Nothopters, return this to its hand, our hand, and create five 1-1 one, one Thopters. Five or six? Oh, it's five, it's one for each power? Huh. I like Coiling Oracle, though. That guy triggers twice? Yeah, we're taking that guy. Plus, putting counters on all of our, our Thopters. Oh, man, that's just bananas. Exile a creature, then return it. So this is just another Venser slash Soul Herder. Hmm. Blink this. You know what? We will take this, because I want to go all in on this, on the blinkable blink abilities. Which is why I'm taking Green Warden of Murasa. <laughs> Oh, what up, Chorwit? Hmm. When Shipwrecked Alzheimer's is about to return an instant or sorcery from your graveyard to your hand, that could trigger a bunch. I think that's probably fine, especially if we can get some reasonable ones. It's cold in here. I imagine as a man of of upper middle class status that you have access to a heating mechanism. We can soul tie. This guy's good. Is scoot swarm better? I don't know, but I'm going to take the scoot swarm because that guy just seems like a good time. Mayor? Actually, let's take the reverse engineering. We could tap a Panharmonicon and a Conjurer's Closet for this. We can tap our Thopters. Karuga, Omega. Ooh, I won't take we can blink Karuga and just to just draw cards from it. That's actually pretty good. None of these cards are any good for us, unfortunately. Wow, that's actually a nice one. I was I was tempted to pick up the Borderland Ranger because it's great with Panharmonicon and Conjurer's Closet, but then they just gave it to us anyway. Okay, that's a lot of five drops. A lot of five drops here. Wing Splicer is pretty decent. It's good to blink and it's good to double. Sylvan Primordial might come back. I do want like some ramp here. Scoot Swarm. I've, I've had some Scoot Swarms get pretty out of control. I try not to play it until I uh, have six or more lands. And then I gotta deal with all of them. Oh, we can have the double Scoot? Two Scoots? It's like Raisin Bran. I'm just gonna take Exclusion Mage here. It kind of does what we want it to do. We only have two cards... That costs three or less. Each Sonic is only cards that can rise through greater and land cards. I mean Is it worth it? I don't know. Uh, spitting image is very good. Although we don't want to copy it and we don't want to. I guess I could actually copy a thing we. Yeah, spitting image is really good. I'm just going to take the image. Like it copies anything. 
any creature, yours or theirs, and you can just do it ad nauseum. Like, I think Spitting Image is actually insanely good. Well, hmm. completely off color talisman. A land that's not ours. Watcher is actually fine. Thank you. Triggers twice, right? Oh, Jimmy with the resub. Thank you, buddy. Really appreciate it. <sighs> Shut up and take my money. Hey, bud. Love you. Leon Tokyo Ryan, I love you too, buddy. I appreciate you, my dude. How do you do, my fellow kids? So this is a five drop. I'm not super interested in that. Yeah, Tokyo Ren, thank you for the support, my dude. Appreciate it. N-Raise Forerunners could just kill some people. Yeah, let's N-Raise Forerunner. Let's see if that's a thing we're doing here. I've lost to that in like... I think we lost to that like in our first draft. Our first... Uh, our first Nega Cube draft. So... Let's try to get our thank revenge. You. Big lightning rod. Thank you for the sub. Really appreciate it. Welcome, welcome, my dude. I like both Pondering Mage and Tezzeret here, but they're both five drops. And we got quite a bit of that going around. It's still Tezzeret. I think we're taking Tezzeret here. Yep, I like Flooded Groove a lot. You are a Mirror Lake also not terrible, but I'd rather have Fixing than a Land... I would also like the if the Sylvan... I don't think the Sylvan guy's coming back. I don't, I don't think we have enough packs left, or cards left, rather. But if... I wish I could be his hands. <laughs> uh, well, joke's on you, buddy. You're extremely handsome. Gotta love modern technology. I was able to draft today while waiting in line for my second vaccine. Wow, what a time to be alive. It's okay that the world is... Uh, on fire due to a, a raging pandemic, but as long as we, we play cards on our phones, like it's such a weird time. Congrats on the second vaccine is by the way, I, I still have to get my first, but working from home and like not really interacting with anyone other than Katie and Mike has been like pretty good for me in terms of <laughs> exposure. So, you know, I'm not going to like, I don't want to cut in line to take it from someone else who needs it more. Best advice for cubing. Listen to what Andy has to say. Carefully evaluate if what he said was worth doing and then don't do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds about right. However, if you replace Andy with Frank and Commander with Cube, you still have a true statement. This is... This is I'm going to show you guys Kerwitz Refrigerator. It's both very impressive. And very funny. Garbage Andy with the gifted sub to Sarah. Thank you, buddy. You ready for this current refrigerator shot? Look at look at this. Look at this. Look how nicely arranged it is. You got the Diet Mountain Dew. You got the Diet Dr. Pepper. Yeah, I'm just going to take Mortar Pot here. And then you got the Voss water. And then you got two pieces of fried chicken on a napkin. <laughs> it's actually fantastic. Uh, Kerwitz not a drinker. Me neither. Pretty funny though. Oh, trading post came back. Okay. I like a memory lapse. Okay. Well. Oh, the Yara Mirror Lake came back. That's cool. Last pick Mirror Lake. You guys ever grab your neck like this? No, me neither. <sighs> This pack's not great. Might just take Counterspell or Bramble Sovereign. I don't even think I like Transmuter here or Shipwreck Dowser just yet. It's still just a 4 4 for 4 as well, which is like probably fine in this cube. I like a Mind Control. Migration path actually seems pretty great here. I like a migration path. 
This deck feels like it wants a lot of mana. I'm gonna I'm gonna migration path. Plus we can cycle it. That seems fine, right? Oh, Elvish Visionary? <laughs> Beautiful. Remember that time we lost that Crystalline Giant the other day? I mean, I'm pretty sure we still won the match, but I still felt bad about it. Elvish Visionary is great. It's kind of the exact card we want with a bunch of high cards here because I it's just a nice little card that you can play and go up the ground until you can really get your things going. Master Transmuter is not living up to the dream here. I don't think Psy is either, unfortunately. I drafted Coma and called him tonight. I dude, I've been Coma was my goal. I was like, I want to draft a Coma at least one time in Caldheim. And I did like 30 Caldheim drafts, never opened one Coma. It was very sad. Andy, you're not allowed to gift any subs anymore? Dang, that's a bummer, dude. I kind of like Sylvan Ranger. I bet Yavamaya Coast comes back. I like Reign of Revelation a lot. I don't think we're Giganta-ing. Hmm. They're just Edge of Autumn, actually. I actually do like Edge of Autumn quite a bit. It ramps us to four, which is pretty, pretty important. We'll Edge of Autumn. This is also 26 cards, so... I don't think we're a Memory Lapse deck. I also don't think we're a Shipwreck Dowser deck. Jimmy the Mole with the Gifted Subs? Oh my god. You're a saint. Thank you. <laughs> How about I give subs? Got her. Man, what a workaround. Okay, so side triggers on artifacts. We have one, two, three, four, five. It's not even when an artifact enters the battlefield. It's when you cast an artifact spell. I don't think that's going to do it. Talisman of Dominance. I, and, and, and considering we're cutting that, I think we're also cutting Witching Well, because I don't care about it. Icefall region is actually just fine. Hunters making big noises, big grumbles in the background. I think it's Clever Impersonator. Clever Impersonator is really good. I don't care about Mortar Pod. I like that Mortar Pod triggers twice. So you get two living weapons, or you get two germs, rather, and one of them dies immediately. So that's good times, you know? I do like the idea of making a bunch of Thopters with Tezzeret and then Enray's, Enray's Forerunnering. I don't, I guess I don't mind wild growth. I think Clever Impersonator being able to copy like Planeswalkers and stuff is really strong. Because for some reason, I feel like this cube does not have a ton of ways to deal with them. Thank you. Oh, definitely Foxy with the gifted sub. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. You take risks, but I don't care about risks. I'm just like the overwhelming stampede. This only needs one cut. We're going to have to evaluate how many cards we have that interact with Panharmonicon after this draft. Or after the after the drafting portion, that is. I'll take Traverse. Thank you. Because I knew mine was fine. Sure. What the hell? Cotty, thank you so much for the resub, buddy. 22 months. We're hitting, We're coming up on those two years. Hmm. Let's take Pathway just in case. I heard we were gifting subs in here. I, I heard that as well. Uh, you may cast an instant or sorcery or artifact card from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. Instant sorcery or artifact. So that's not bad. We have Spitting Image. Migration Path, which is not going to be super impressive. Reverse Engineer, which is nice. This is a land. Yeah, actually... I mean, I don't know if that's good enough. It is a 5-5 five, five Flyer. Is that something? So we essentially need two cuts. Card 
cards that work well with Panharmonicon. Enters the battlefield. If an artifact or creature entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability to trigger. So this would trigger twice because it triggers on something entering the battle out entering the battlefield. So if we had like Sylvan Ranger and like six mana, we could actually make two copies of Sylvan Ranger. Hmm. <laughs> that is a thing. You Karuga also triggers off Panharmonicon. Like Yeah, I think we actually have enough for Panharmonicon for sure. Which means we also probably have enough for Conjurer's Closet, because entering the battle you can hear your opponent get a creature. You can have your opponent get a creature and then pay for them to get two tokens. Yeah, that's <laughs> I always have to remind myself that it's like, okay, don't pay if it's theirs because you don't get the copy. They do. I think Mortar Pod can probably go. We're not living the artifact dream here. <sighs> God. Every time I hear Karuga, I think of I think of Kokomo by the Beach Boys. I always think of Aruba. It's not good. One one more cut. I think it's actually trading post. I don't care about trading post. And I'm going to assume this is going to cost four. Oh, the, the Yav My Coast didn't come back, interestingly. So it is a seven, eight, nine, ten, six, seven, eight. But we have Sylvan Ranger and Borderland Ranger. I think that's actually fine. Seven, eight, nine. Ten, eight. 7, 8, 9, 10, 6, 7, 8. I think that's actually fine. Oh, man, it's Garuda and Karuga. I think it's because the sounds are so similar. My hair's like doing a little swoosh on the side here. You see it? Like, it's, like it's, it's like coming down and up, and I'm like, what are you doing? Why would you do this? <sighs> Serious question. Baby Layla is due 421, but we're thinking she will be early. You want it on bets for the actual date? I have 413. I mean, obviously you're going to get me to say 420. <laughs> Can you imagine if your baby's birthday is on 420? I mean, that'd be funny. Sylvan Ranger into this into tap these two. No, nah, just kidding. That doesn't work like that. Um, I think we're going to go get a green here. Because we have triple green here. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. This gives us like three blue, so. Unless unless someone's going to kill our, our flooded grove somehow. See, this is why punctuation is important, because after rapper, you should have a comma. Because I read it as the rapper killer Mike, and I'm like, who's Mike the rapper killer? I don't know who that is. And I was like, oh, the rapper killer Mike. I was like, oh, okay, that makes more sense. So this is why you need punctuation. I don't really want to just bounce this guy. We can actually bounce our, nope, we can't. This is a newer one that doesn't let you bounce your own things. Um, yeah, it's, it's opponent controls. That's actually, so it's both good and bad, right? In the old days, if you played mana war and it had, and there were no creatures on board, you would have to bounce your own mana war. You couldn't actually play it if your opponent had no creatures or you had no other creatures. So nowadays it's it, like creatures almost exclusively say an opponent controls. Um, cause it, it mitigates a lot of the feel bads of having to kill your own things. But on the other hand, you can't benef bounce beneficial creatures. I mean, I guess I could also say you may bounce up to one target creature. Like, I, I think that's probably just better templating, to be quite honest. I really don't want to bounce Seagate Oracle. I don't know. Like, that just seems bad. I'm not going to play a card just to play it. 
Although we have nothing to do next turn. We, if we can draw four drop into land, I think that would be ideal. Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy's been drinking. Haruga. Oh, the old, uh, see, now I will bounce the token, so that's pretty good. We do still need another... Well, they didn't attack there. Fascinating. So I don't want to waste Clever Impersonator just yet. So I will actually Exclusion Mage and bounce this Spirit token. Uh, Van Online, this is the Nega Cube we are drafting. Will not block it. I've actually enjoyed the Nega Cube so far. It's not overly powerful where I'm like, oh, cool, I just got destroyed by this one specific card. Exile another target creature. Return that creature to the battlefield and someone controls the initiative. So we can, like... Hmm. You guys ever been to the Kazandu Valley? <laughs> I bet you haven't. Actually, so I either want to copy this I think we just want to copy Mage and bounce this again. Like, as if we... Because next turn we can actually play Closet and just, like, loop. We can loop either Clever... See, again, Clever Impersonator is fantastic with Conjurer's Closet. Because you can just keep looping it. I mean, we can also play Icefall Regent next turn and tap down their Gale Powder Mage. Oh, they're gonna play two. Oh, it's a little, little chromatic star. Then your end step, you exile a creature you control and then return to the battlefield. That guy's pretty good. Let's get closety. You got four spike? Oh, I don't have four spike. Oh, you didn't have four spike? Ooh, hot. Oh, yeah. Now the dream is being lived. Where do bounce tokens go? Well, sweetie, one day when you're older, me and your mother will have a conversation with you about where the bounce tokens go. Uh-oh. Angel of Despair coming down. Meteor Golem. Well, that's better than Angel of Despair for us. Maybe? Huh. Well, I don't want to bounce this guy. Oh, we can just copy this guy. God, spitting image is so good, dude. Also, N-Ray's Forerunner's next turn might just be the death. Actually, I kind of just want to kill the Meteor Golem. <laughs> now we can attack with these two. Dude, Spitting Image in the graveyard. We just recast Spitting Image, copying Meteor Golem every turn if we hit lands. Like, bananas. Every time I have Spitting Image, I'm always so impressed with it. Even in the Live the Dream cube, I was, like, so impressed. I was like, wow, this card's very good. Like, just... Because, like, when it's turn six, and you now all of a sudden have things to do with your excess lands, like... So good. So... I mean, they do have four cards in hand. Five if you count whatever they get off Chromatic Star, which I, I do. Nothing bounces like a token. <laughs> oh, man. Come on, buddy.
So they just cracked that thing. I, I mean, I'll, they actually can play land, and then there's seven mana, eight mana, four cards. I don't know what's going on here. So it's 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 22, 23. So it's a lot of damage if we hit a land. Okay, they blinked my token. That is unfortunate. That's five less damage. Ooh, Panharmonicon. Huh. Well, this is also a token. Oh, it's a clever impersonator, so nothing I blink right now is actually in bad shape. Thank you! Enigma Lurker, thank you for the sub, buddy. Really appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. Where do blink tokens go? I hate you guys so much. Oh, God. Okay. So I can either play Icefall Regent or we can play Panharmonicon. I hope we hit a land for next turn and then end raise Forerunners. We could also just reverse engineer to try to hit a land. One, two, three, four, five. If we hit like land two drop, it's actually pretty good. Improvises just artifacts, right? Yeah, okay. We can also just play Icefall Regent, tap this. I think we're doing this. I think we're going to try to set up for a bigger turn. Oh, that's exactly what we wanted. Jeez. Oh, man. Yeah, that was very good. Because now we have end raise four runners. One, two, three, four, five. We have, we have seven mana next turn. I'm going to listen to you while I sort comics. Shrew Garner, I have it no other way. Enjoying the whale flavored horse meat. Put in a put in a can by a man downtown. In a factory downtown. And if I had my little way. This is nice because exile another target creature. I guess they could exile their own either Hanged Executioner or Seagate Oracle in order for, for value town. But it's nice that they like they can't they can't affect our guys with it. And if I had my little way, I'd eat well flavored horse meat every day. I mean, I have to assume they have a counter spell, right? That's sad. Hmm. I'm actually quite tempted to play Bramble Sovereign and Panharmonicon here instead. Or we can play Sovereign Coiling Oracle, make a copy. What do you guys think about that? Hmm, I don't know. What's better? Okay, so I have big thoughts on why Marvel effed up their numbering system. I really don't think they did. Um, it's just different volumes now. Like, it's... Because, so here's the thing. Here's the, the simplest explanation. Like, what Marvel did was um, they they renumbered things. So books that got to like 600, 700, they, they started over. Now it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, up to like 30. Um, but it would also have a legacy number, which is like 637. So it'll be like issue number 1, legacy 637. So the 637 is the, the original 
like actual number in that that book series. So like Amazing Spider-Man has a 637, but they've renumbered it to like number one. This is all an example, right? And the reason is because new comic readers have no starting points. If you're a new comic reader, you want to get into comics and you see like 700 issues of Spider-Man, you have literally no idea when to jump on. You're like, I can't, I don't know what, to, when do I start? Do I start at 500, 530? How many books do I have to read to enjoy this series? I don't know. Nobody knows. So what they did, which makes total sense, is now they break everything up into chunks. So it's like, here's, there's all like a, you know, volume five is one through 30. Volume six is one through 28, whatever, you know. Now they're easily digestible. And you also uh, get to keep the old numbering system. I'll try to, I'll see if I can show you an example. <laughs> see, this is a perfect example. So this is a pretty recent Spider-Man issue. And as you can see, uh, it is issue 52. So it's the most recent, this is like from, this is probably from either uh, early this year or late last year. But it's also the legacy issue is Spider-Man 853. So this is actually Amazing Spider-Man 853, but they've renumbered it to 52 because it's 52 in this particular line, this particular run, which is a run by Nick Spencer. So when this run ends, they'll presumably have a new author and a new, a new artist on the title as well. I'm looking inside of the book. Can you show me a picture of the book? Because a lot of times in the new legacy issues, they're just, it's right on the front. Like it's right there under the, like legacy 8, 853. Does each volume contain a somewhat self-contained story arc? Yes. Yes, it does. Um, or it contains several self-contained story arcs. Um, so like 52 issues, obviously that 52 issues isn't one story. It's a bunch of stories, but they're all the stories done in the Nick Spencer run of Spider-Man. <laughs> Remember the Spider-Man issue where Spider-Man gave birth to himself? That was cool. <laughs> oh, it didn't rove a horror, eh? Okay. God, blinking that seems bananas. Yep. Nope. However, if they don't have a counter spell, what are we getting rid of? Let's get rid of Mirror Lake. And if they do it again, which they're going to. Okay, this this should be lethal. I can't imagine it's not. Because we have double triggers from Enraged Forerunners. So we can get rid of Bramble Sovereign at this point. But they're tapped out, right? I don't know if this is correct. All our guys are getting plus four, plus four, right? Yeah, this is fine. So what is this? Uh, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. This is 16. Oh, fuck. Well, never mind. That's actually worse. <laughs> that's, that's unfortunate. Well, biscuits. I guess, I mean, they have, oh my God, they have three cards in hand now. That's rough. I'll get rid of Bramble Sovereign. Hmm. So is it still lethal? I don't actually know. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So they can literally block with this guy and this guy. But our guys do get Vigilance. Hmm. Man, Panharmonica would have been so good here. We're also at four. Also, this guy has vigilance as well. But these guys kill us in the air is the problem. One, two, three, four. Actually, they're tapped out. If we panharmonicon tap this and this, it's actually pretty good, right? One, two, three, four. Panny boy. Because even if they spend mana getting rid of it, like... Um, this and this. Because they still don't untap, so it gives us better attacks with these guys anyway, so. We are at four, though. We do have to block some things. 
feel like I feel like I, I, I don't know where we lost control here. Oh god, they're gonna do a thing. Six mana. Ugh, God. I don't know if I care about that, though, actually. I mean, we were expecting them to remove that somehow anyway, so. And the fewer blockers they have here, the better. So as long as I don't have a counterspell in hand, I think this is probably good for us. Mm, yeah, get that guy in there, too. Jump here. Actually, it's probably just better to kill this guy, right? Like, we lose a 2-2 two -two instead of a 1-1, one -one, but the 1... Let's, let's make sure the damage doesn't matter. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 23. Oh, fuck, I think we're still not doing it. So, I just want to do some math real quick. Hold on. Okay, if we block with Ranger... But then this is a blocker, right? So that's got to count. Like, we lose one power, but they lose three toughness. So, yeah, that's got to be correct. Even if it doesn't win us the game on the spot, which it might not because of this stupid guy now. One, two, three, four, five. Other creatures you can control plus two plus two visions and trample. So they're getting plus four, plus four, right? <sighs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If we copy this, we get rid of these two. That doesn't seem great, though, because it doesn't have reach, and then we just died of the Gale Powder Mage. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Plus twelve is twenty-three. They can block five. <laughs> they have to block with both, and then we're just dead to the stupid heart this stupid idiot. All right, well, let's Coiling Oracle first and see what happens. I guess we could copy Dinrova Horror and bounce a Gale Powder Mage and something else. That's pretty good as well, I guess. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's not terrible. Huh. So we, we bounce Gale Powder Mage, or we copy we copy Denrova Horror. I don't want to say I don't know why I said Gale Powder Mage, and then we have to bounce like Gale Powder Mage Pilgrim's Eye, and then they'll have one flyer. We'll have a ton of things on the ground. We can also play Wing Splicer, but then if they have a way to remove the Wing Splicer, we die. I think it's got to be this. Copy the Denrova Horror. We could copy this, but then it's going to end up killing this and the Horror, and then we still die. Two, three, four, five, six. Pitch a land. Move into the country. I'm gonna eat me a lot of peaches. Peaches come from a can. And we're bouncing Pilgrim's Eye instead of Hanged Executioner because I'd rather them get a land than an extra 1 1 flyer when we're at 2 life. Spinning Image is very, very good. <laughs> Giving us access to any creature on the board is insane. And now we have five blockers for three ground guys, which is good for us. Like, I just feel like we have to get into a situation where we can end, end raise four runners, right? Like, we're just really trying to, to eke out every... eke out every advantage. Move into the country. Oh, it went from X-Men to New X-Men to X-Men Legacy. Yes, those are three different books, though. That's the problem. They're not all X-Men. New X-Men is its own book, and X-Men Legacy is its own book. And you said that seven minutes ago. So, <laughs> good times. Peace. 
Peaches come from your mom. They were put there by your dad in a factory down. That doesn't make any sense at all. How many peaches would it take to OD? Oh God, actually there has to be a number, right? I'm pretty sure every food and beverage has an OD number or, or amount, I, I should say, I guess. It's O-Cat. Okay. Did those peaches slide down the butter? <laughs> okay. Okay. Listen, Burnerator, you can't, you can't casually mention the butter shoot. It's spectacular. Spider-Man number 16, where Spider-Man gives birth to himself. Okay. Hold on. Spectacular 16. Oh, of course there's YouTube videos of it as well. Cause of course there is. Okay, are we in end race foreigner territory now? Oh boy. I have so many books to go through. Yeah, I actually had, before I moved out of Florida, I had. 11 long boxes of comic books. I sold them all. I took out some keys that I wanted, like some, some gems, but they were, mo they weren't like, it wasn't like four, it wasn't like 11 boxes of, of money issues. It was 11 boxes of just like stories I've collected. So like, you know, the full run of like the X-Men I was reading or the Spider-Man I was reading. And like the majority of those issues were, were not worth anything. The only better moment is when Batman brings Raphael to the alley where his parents died. <sighs> I get the feeling that Sarah just likes these big moments. These big, uh, I want these big milestone moments. I was really worried about the amount of time we were taking earlier, but now I feel like our opponent is taking. Okay. You got it. Okay. That was a good, that was good. That was good. It's probably going to be dead. So we just have to jump block these two, I guess. <sighs> they just keep having things and it's very unfortunate for us. <laughs> like they just put eight more power on the board. So it's like, well, that's pretty good. Let's draw a land here. Oh, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, we can actually play wing split, wing splicer and spitting image here, which is a very, very nice. Peaches come. Oh, they actually, if we bounce this, they just lose it forever. Huh. That was actually pretty good. So we'll have one, two, three, four, five. They'll have six things. We'll have one, two, three, four. We'll have six things. They can hang the execution or something, but that's a one for one. They won't have any cards in hand, so they will be in top deck mode. What is this? 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yeah, that's not going to do it. I'm pretty sure we actually have to copy Dinarova Horror. Oh, we're actually going to bounce a second thing too, though. Yeah, okay. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Pitch this. This is going to be a turn. Okay. Um. Bounce this one. Forces them to discard their last card. And whatever, whatever else we bounce actually goes away forever as well. So we're probably getting rid of... Oh, what we could have done is bounce Mind Control and the Golem. That would have been good. Is it up to? What if I cancel? Oh, that didn't do anything. Dang it. I really wish I had thought of that because then we could have actually gotten back. We would have bounced... Mind, we would have bounced Mind Control, so they would have had to discard Gale Powder Mage. They would have bounced Gollum, and they would have had to discard Mind Control. We would have got our Denerval Horror back, which would have been very good. The first one targeted the Denerval Horror. What is the next thing we want to get rid of? Probably the 5-5. Five five. Or this. Yeah, I think it's this. The reason being that, like... Oh, fuck. 
Wait, what? Hold on. Is it to its owner's hand? Oh shit. <laughs> well, that that's that's really bad. Okay. Oh fuck. <sighs> okay, well, that was a misplay. Yep. Not ideal. So now they can actually, well, not dead, I guess. That's That was really bad. Yeah, the first way we would have done it if we bounced the mind control and the golem, like we would have actually been, yep, we just threw away this game. Having this card and raise four runners is absolutely terrible. Magic is extremely hard. Yep, I, oh God. It sucks when you when you when you realize it after. Like, it's is it just playing too fast? I don't know. Probably, is it my fault? Hundred percent. All right. So, three and three. Like, I kind of just want to keep this guy alive because it's very very good. I'm very frustrated at myself. Oh, I guess we still have theirs. So I can actually block here and then block here. And then we get to keep a wing. Yeah, that was so bad. We know their last card is Gale Powder Mage, so. Oh, no, they discarded the Gale Powder Mage. <laughs> we get two lands. Oh, boy. Oh, the deck is shining now. We are living the, our best lives. Let's guy just get forest or do we just have only forests left? So what are we copying? Um, so we can actually copy this, but then we, then we die if they exile it. See, the giving them this back has been really brutal. Actually, no, we don't, we have a flyer. Sure. One, two, three, four, five, six. Pitch this. I don't know if they're gonna see it. They might not. They might see it. They're probably gonna see it, right? It's still two for ones, them. And then we still have another land for next turn to copy something else. And they're in top deck mode. So I actually think we're surprisingly doing fine here. They're actually I think they're considering whether they just let this resolve. And then hanged execution our wing splicer to kill us. No one ever is to blame. Bam, bam, bam. Man, spitting image was like a, a, a none for one because we actually got two free lands here. So now we have a blocker for here, and these guys are not impressive. So, all right. Top deck. Don't be something good. It was not anything good. Oh, yeah. Copying Wing Splicer here seems good, right? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. We are one mana shy. Draw a card if you control three or more artifacts. Draw two cards. Let's Spitting Image this turn, and then next turn we can Tezzeret. Copying the Wing Splicer might be better than copying the Master Splicer, because while it gives us three threes, it also gives us two creatures that give flying. And that seems a little better. Yep, yep. And now we can start putting the pressure on. Wow. If we win this game, I'm going to be very surprised because I definitely punted it. Every land in our deck is now a, a, a banger. Let's draw two. Oh, Karuga? Are we just going to die? <laughs> uh, one, two. No, let's attack with one. I don't want them to kill one token and then be like, oh, I guess we're dead. Um, Karuga would trigger for, we'd draw one, two, three, four. We'd kill ourselves. We literally can't cast a Karuga here. Let's put Tusker and trigger again. We kind of have to be careful at this juncture. <laughs> okay, well. I think we just need to close out the game next turn. And we're no longer drawing any more cards off Tezzeret. <laughs> I 
Oh, Green Warden seems great here. Uh, let's get back Endray's Forerunners. And what else? Clever Impersonator seems good. Yes. Yes. One. A two, three, four. Clever Impersonator. Let's copy Wing Splicer again. All right, what are we doing here? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Treternal Witness. Love it. Absolutely love it. Man, remember this game where we were like kicking and screaming our way into it? Um, how do we lose here? <laughs> by, by attacking with stupid things? Yeah, let's just attack with this. <laughs> Leave enough back in case they have like settle the wreckage or some nonsense. Sure. <sighs> Fascinating. We could have end raised, but like, I don't know. For some reason I was just like, you know what? We don't have to play anything else. We're good. Let's just, let's just attack them. I think that went quite well. Oh yeah, Borderland Ranger giving us two copies of Spitting Image is a hell of a draw. Hell of a draw. Frank is casually watching Spider-Man give birth to himself on the second screen. Actually, it's one long monitor, but I do have something on the right here. So I'm actually looking up collector's edition winter orbs on eBay. <laughs> we have a good time. I'm going to keep this hand because any green is like just all we really need. All three of these guys are great. Or reading it at least. Yeah, I'm just like, I'm just reading that moment. Why give birth? You don't say. Go on. Oh, boy. All right. So they have 908 and we have they we have a minute less and we're all both pretty low. So I wonder if they actually played this out just to be like take more time than me. I might win by time. I can see it. Okay. Well, I can also see us just losing right here without. Their deck's not very quick, but I don't want to have to like have a 40 minute game here either, so. I think this is actually kind of a grindy cube. either adept sure land you know what i'll take it any land we can play panharmonicon if we hit a green we can play like sylvan ranger for another green so and then we can play closet closet conjurer the following turn conjurer's closet rather they also only have three cards in hand we have a full grip that's fine okay I see how it is going to go here. Wow, they're really taking advantage of this scry too. If this is a Tome Raider, man, that'd be so much better. Green source. Oh boy. Good times. I guess we'll get rid of a Bramble Sovereign. Hm. 
Well, this is a good game. Oof. I guess we'll discard Spitting Image because it's just as good in the trash can. Okie dokie. That was a fun game. Both sides played hard. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Good game. It was a real close one. Yeah, let's maul this one. Okay, now we're talking. I'm going to keep it, and we're going to put this guy on the bottom. So, no, the last card in my deck is a big old pig. I think we're just going to play the mammoth here. Don't be four lands. One land... And I actually don't know here. Maybe border. Let's say Borderland Ranger, because this isn't Green Sun Zenith where you're trying to get. Not Green Sun Zenith. This isn't um, Sheldock Isle where like it's the it's similar ability obviously, but it's not a card where like you want to like hide all of the. Like you want to get the most value out. Of it. You want to put eleven drop under here because then I get to cast it for free. No, it's more like you're just putting it in your hand and what's going to be the best card to actually cast. Oh, this old chestnut again. Menace, sure. Shut up and take my money. Oh, okay. Oh, one big old pig buck. I like it. You think they block here? A lot of people don't block because they're like, I don't want to give you. Okay, sure. Getting a second, getting a second blue source here is so much better than just having the city on the board. Sure. I probably would have just taken two if I were them. Because now we get to play Karuga, draw two, and get a 5-4, and trigger this guy again. That seems pretty good. As long as they don't get lifelink here. Or f for... No. What'd they get? Oh, just plus one, plus one? Sure. And they're attacking. Aggressive. Super aggressive. And next turn we get to Green Warden. Draw two. Oh, yeah. Oh, Ridge Scale Tusker and Lit Yara. And then the following turn, we get to Ridge Scale. I guess there's no point in attacking with this guy, right? Well, I guess if they chump, if they chump block this, then we just want to get that two points in. Okay, we'll just take five. Sure. Oh, yeah, this is good. <laughs> Lit Yara, make a copy. Live in the dream. It's just like Sheldock. You play with Doomsday and Emrakul. I feel like I was mistaken. Yeah, that's good. That's a good one. There's first... Oh, now they're like, oh, I gotta hold back now. Ooh, interesting. Huh. So I think we just bounce this? It doesn't do much, though, right? I think I'd rather have double Tusker. So 6-5, they block here, they block here. Yeah, this is fine. We're just getting in with both these guys. 
Because next turn we have Let Yara Mirror Lake to copy again, so that's fine. Sure, sure. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's totally fine. As long as this guy's going to hexproof, we actually have a, a good exclusion mage target here. Oh, that's annoying. Sure. Um, let's get rid of reverse engineer. I don't foresee us. Oh, lifelink. Oh. Sure, I'll just hit you for five. There are two and we have a hell of a board. Yeah, this seems good. We can also play Mammoth as another land to make two more Scoot Swarms. Okie dokie. Oh, we can actually play Mammoth next turn, make two more Scoot Swarms, and then copy Ridge Scale Tusker. That seems good. I'm no expert, but... That's good, but I don't think it I don't think it does anything here. Mm -hmm. They're at two, like all my creatures are lethal. Like we're just gonna pitch warden and then keep Kazandu Mammoth and something else. Like we have four guys. They're all lethal. Either we copy this guy or they bounce and we replay it. Sure. Pitch Green Warden. So what do we want to do? Play it first? We copy... No, we want to play the Mammoth first. Because we want all of our creatures to be two power. <laughs> Going through the motions and blocking here is just so silly. Okay. Got him. Like, I mean, this cube is definitely less powerful than like the vintage cube, but I mean, there's a lot of interaction and I feel like a lot of the, the losses that I've taken have been my fault because I've missed really specific interactions or because I just wasn't super familiar with the card. And I think that's really good. Uh, I kind of like this. I like Edge of Autumn into, into whatever. It feels more limited, but not in a bad way. Like, like when I think of limited, I think of like vanilla 3-2, vanilla 2-2. Two, two. Here's a 4-4 four, for four, 5. Like, that's what I think of when I think of limited. So I really don't like... I think this is far above normal limited, but like I also think it's in a good way. Play this guy... Actually, do we even want to play Edge of them? We have Watch. We have 3-drop, 4-drop. No, I think we're just going to get a guy down. We don't have a 4-drop, so we can just as easily play this next turn, or if we need a 4th land. Um, we have Spitting Image, and I want to hit 6. So let's just get a Borderland Ranger here. Okay. Well, an 0-3 is a bummer. We do have four lands though, so that's probably more than enough. I'm just gonna bounce that idiot. 
We can also still play this next turn if we want to just make sure we hit a land, and then we can actually play one more land. Go one, two, get an Edge of Autumn land, play our fourth land. I guess we can actually play our fourth land and still, still Edge of Autumn, so. Oh, you again, eh? Oh, that's perfect. How perfect is that? Edge, cast, island, play this, play Oracle. One, two. I mean, next time we can migration path and just plan to end raise forerunners. <sighs> I just saw that. Hopefully they're not. They're like, oh, it's too late now. What? Wait, what just fucking happened? Pretty good. That is a 10 10. And now we have spitting image, so I can just copy this and kill its kill this and then kill itself. Oh, but then like then it kills this. Dang it, there's so many things happening. Oh god. Don't like that. Okay, well, they're really doing it now. Actually, I think we're just going to wipe their board here, right? As long as they don't have a counter spell, I'm actually feeling okay about it. Yeah, we're just going to kill everything. I'm pretty sure. One, two, three, four, five, six. This guy comes into play. We'll shoot this guy first. Shoot this lady. And then we're going to shoot, I guess we shoot this, but it doesn't fight again is the problem. Do we just get rid of this? Sacrifice this, return a creature from your grave. Yeah, we have to actually kill this, unfortunately. Oh, I guess we can actually just spitting image again next turn. <laughs> so that's pretty decent, I guess. Again, spitting image. Just fantastic. When the creature put onto the battlefield with Diablox Servitude dies, exile it and return servitude to its owner's hand. Return creature from to the battlefield. All right, we did that. When the creature put onto the battlefield with the Diablox Servitude dies, which was the Angel of Despair. Exile the creature, it's still in the graveyard, and return Dialect Servitude to its owner's hand. Hmm. Well, that's fascinating. And they have two cards in hand. Our hand is pretty good. That's weird. Hmm. 
Yeah, Andy, the way I think of Cube is that it's like it's like it's kind of like Commander, only you get to play a different deck every single time. Oof, that was a good one. I did not realize that was in here. I'm going to attack because NRA's Forerunners just kills them if they're at six. And I feel like I am kind of advantaged on an empty board. Unless they go time warp or something. Uh, huh. Okay. So it doesn't have trample. So you're going to have to... Oh, they're just... No, this has got to be within a sorcery speed, right? No. Huh. Uh, huh. So let's do this. We assume they're going to port of Carful, get back Angel. Because they kind of have to. And then we... Oh, we don't have double blue. Do we need double blue? I don't think we do. No, we don't. Good for us. Psionic Blast. Okay, so they're two for wanting themselves here. Okay. And now they're at four. So I kind of like just Borderland Ranger into Wing Splicer. And then we should have more than enough power on the board. Oh, let's play the land. All right. Four spike. Wow. Well, neutralize, sure. I mean, they're, they 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 gotta have only so many counter spells. And raise forerunner is still seven seven haste, so they have to block it if they play like Angel of Despair out of the bin. Hmm. Well. I think we're just attacking and kind of forcing their hand with the angel here. Hmm. I don't really want to exile it. But the only thing we can hit is spitting image. I guess we can hit edge, edge of autumn, but that's not exciting because it doesn't actually do anything. Is there, a way, is, there a way, is there a way we can put the screws to them here? Playing this doesn't do anything. It makes this a 3-3. Then they're actually free to get back Angel or Allosaur. Altasaur? Altasaur. Uh, it's definitely not Migration Path. It's probably either this or this. This makes us a 4-4. They can still go Angel, kill the Forerunners, block the Borderland Ranger. 3-4-5-6. They also didn't have enough mana to do that last turn, and now they do. So... I want to attack if they get the ranger out here or the the angel. Oh, they didn't do it. See, interesting, because they can kill our Lit Yara Mirror Lake and they're not doing that. So I think we're just playing this. And if they have another counter spell, like, okay. I really don't want to exile spitting image, I'll be honest. I might just play this as a 5-5 five five and not actually get any value out of it. It's instant sorcerer artifact card. Huh. Hmm.
Although having two copies of Scholar, one of which I presume they'll kill with Angel, or they can just play Altasaur and kill both. <sighs> Port of Carfell is a heck of a card here. Are you countering this too? Uh, Edge of Autumn doesn't do anything. It says if you control four or fewer lands, search library for basic land, put on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle your library. It is actually a blank if you have more than four lands. Quench. I don't understand this. Like, it's so weird because it's like you have, like, this is six mana. So if you do anything else on your turn, you can't activate this. And this is such a better use of mana because now you're at two. So you have to actually play something. And by playing something, you can't activate this. Or you can only activate this. And you have to do it before blocks. You guys understand what I'm saying here? So now we're talking. I mean, now it's I, I feel like it's got to be pretty safe to end raise four runners. They have one card in hand. And they can't activate their thing, so... Oh, it's eight. <laughs> what a dummy. I don't even have enough. I guess it is Crater Hoof, right? Okay. We're going to four runners uh, right on out of here. Do we have anything that's good against their graveyard? Ugh. <sighs> Sundering growth. Destroy an artifact or an enchantment, then populate. That's actually probably decent, to be quite honest. And we're making tokens here. It's plus four plus four. Sure, it's just a. It's, it's just not great. Is what it is. What it is. Is our game four? Or, yeah, nope. Let's take reverse engineer out. It's kind of clunky against them. I don't love this hand. The deck is actually seems really sweet. Um, sure. Pitch a foresto. Exclusion Mage, not bad against most of their fat idiots. Obviously the only spell here. I mean, I guess we could have put... <laughs> again, it's not Sheldock Isle, so I guess we could have put land in hand. Our hand is not terrible with some lands. Nothing, huh? I think we're just playing Mammoth here. And then crossing our fingers. They're going to counter it. And we saw like five counter spells. <laughs> False summons, quench, neutralize, and dismiss. So... Those are all not terrible counter spells either, so. Land? So good. Live in the dream. Let's counter this one too. Dismiss it. Yep. Never fails. Land? Okay. Watcher's doing work here. Also, if you guys are watching on Twitch, be sure to follow or subscribe. It's a great way to support the channel. And you can join the subscriber Discord, which is pretty sweet. It's an enjoyable place to be. You can play Commander with Michael B., you guys can play Among Us with Super Fritz. 
So they're definitely keeping quench mana up. Let's see it. Show me the quench. Oh, no quench. Hmm. Interesting. Like, we can sack a land to draw a card with Edge of Autumn, but at best this turn, we're going to be just sacrificing a land and going to four. That's all that's, that's going to happen. If we hit a land, we play it, which we can't because we already played land this turn. The thing you want to do is be able to spend the six mana next turn on something like Spitting Image. So, Ridge Scale Tusker would be nice. <sighs> Dang it. Okay. Well, it's not ideal. However, if we draw a blue source, it's pretty good. Oh, they're doing a thing here. Okay. Island? Visionary. Island? Okay. Still not terrible. Like, we still have Icefall Region as an option next turn. I mean, them having an out a discard outlet, though, is really good. They can discard anything, reanimate it with Diabolic Edict. <sighs> Although, if we hit another land, we have a spitting image of our own, so... That's pretty good. And Angel of Despair. Stinkweed Imp. Hmm. Not what I was expecting. Body Double. Karuga? Karuga's pretty good. It's not bad. It's not bad. Did they draw one? Okay. Well, oh, they've clearly f 6 here. Oh, they got a Zatalpa in the graveyard. That's something. That guy's indestructible, right? That's a big boy. Also, if theirs has Trample and we copy it with Spitting Image and then we Ridge Scale Tusker, ours will be a 5-9, which means it gets past theirs. Then we have the better Zatalpa. I think they're just sacking Obsessive Stitcher here. Oh. Well, that's good. Oh, look, they have Angel and Altasaur in the graveyard. How'd they do that? What am I missing? Draw cards and discard, sure. So they're just going to kill Icefall Regent. Well, that's good. But you know what else is good? Spitting image again. Come on, land. Land and no counter spell from the from the opposition. <sighs> Fingers crossed one time. Oh, I don't like this, actually. They have a quite a good plan here. They actually sack Obsessive Stitcher to get back Angel and kill their own Altasaur in response. They did not do that.
Now, if we actually shoot this, um, so this is this is actually this is actually quite complicated. If we kill this in response, they can activate it and get back like Zatalpa. If we kill this, they can still activate the. They could just pretty much do whatever. I think we just have to kill the the apex the apex Altasaur here. It's not going to do anything, but it might force them to sack it if they don't know that. They did not. They did not do that. Really? They didn't activate it to put like Zatal? Did they sacrifice this? Return a creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. Why wouldn't you just snap get Zatalpa and start hitting me for eight? I don't understand. This is very weird. Not sure I understand. Unfortunately, the only like one of the main hits for this keeps being spitting image, which is not the card I wanna I wanna exile from my graveyard. Although Green Warden's pretty decent as a target. Or as a as a as a thing to cast, I guess is what I what I meant to say. Hmm. I don't think we're playing that. Well, two cards in hand. What do we get back here? I, I honestly think it's just land, to be quite honest. That's me saying honest twice in the same sentence. Like, land lets us either cast Scholar or Spitting Image, whichever we want. It's not exciting, but it's better than Watcher. It's better than Visionary. Because if we play Visionary and get a land, we still can't cast anything else. We could go Panharmonicon into Visionary. But they're in a position where, like, they start activating this to get this, and uh, we need we don't have we, we need to maximize the number of turns we have. No blocks, obviously. I mean, if they have counterspell here, it's rough. But they no longer have a looting outlet. Oh, that's pretty good. All right, next turn we can Tusker, and Tusker makes this a hell of a tangler. It's indestructible, so they have to either bounce it, or, I mean, that's pretty much it, right? Wow. This, is, this has been a game. I feel like they're gonna have an answer. <laughs> Okie dokie. I mean, we can do it again. We're gonna take eight here. All right. We cannot do it again. I lied to you. I'm so sorry. Ooh, we're not 
not dead yet. Let's see if they block. They might have to block. In which case we can get a land. And then spitting image. Wow, they didn't block? Jeez, the greed is real. I guess it's not greed. They knew what was going on. <sighs> so frustrating. We just don't have it. We just don't have like removal or um, <laughs> ways to get rid of their graveyard. So it's like we're kind of just hoping they don't assemble this combo and get their. I feel like their 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 deck is very very reliant on uh, obsessive Stitcher. Is that what it's called? Yes, like this. All right. Well, hopefully hoping for a four drop into a into a land for Karuga. Hmm. Cast. Let's get another. Let's get another island, I guess. I mean, we can just scoot swarm flood strand. Hmm. So we can either play Borderland. Or I think we actually play Borderland Ranger here to get a land, because then we can just play one of our better threats next turn. Yeah, I like this better. Because otherwise we're just hoping to hit a land. And either way, we're putting two power on the board and Scoot Swarm's not super impressive here. If they tap out, it's going to be very good for us. Yep, getting to slam a Tezzeret here is nice. I mean, if they go discard, land, Angel of Despair, kill your Tezzeret, it's going to be sad. Let's see if that's exactly what they do. I mean, that would mean they've drawn Angel of Despair, Obsessive Stitcher, uh, and Diabolic Servitude all three games. Okay, Beacon going to the graveyard is fine. Yeah, I don't care about any of those things. Karuga. Do we just Scoot Swarm play land? I'm pretty sure we do. Next time we go play a land and attack with like a bajillion? Or draw rather, draw we draw one, two, three, four, five, six cards. That's pretty wild. Well, that's good, but again, it doesn't do anything on the board, so. Okie dokie. I mean, my 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 big concern is Altasaur, right? Because it kills our whole board. It's it's a, it's an unbelievable card. Against a deck like ours. It's like a one-sided Wrath of God that leaves him with a 10-10. Ancient Stone Idol. I feel like they're gonna servitude here, and I think that's actually completely okay, that's fine. What courage goes in your hand, Ancient Stone Idol? Okay, sure, thought courage goes in the hand. I don't get to know what you've got. 
Um, let's play this. Double Swarmles. Four, five. Karuga. Fill the grip. Um, I don't really have an incentive to draw another card here. Okay. So, we can go one, two, three, four. We can go one, two, three, four. I'm not going to attack. And race four just kills them. So they either, like, they either find a way to play Altasaur this turn, which means they have to discard it and have a reanimate spell that costs four and a land. And even then, like, they can go four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They're probably going to go nine. So, like, I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We still have two creatures. We can go and raise four runners. Yep, there's the guy. <laughs> Now three games. Three for three. Oh, we just win the game. All right. Deck is doing well. This is the dream that we're living. And then we wait. Um, yeah, well, this queue has been decent, so I've been in a decent mood, I'd say. Lost the die roll. Well, that's stupid. What's hold up here? Dragon Rider. Well, I don't know what's going on. I'm going to pause until I get here. Nope, never mind. And that was the exact moment they arrived. I will keep this hand. I've been watching for a couple years in the team. I finally got to hear. <laughs> nice. Let's do it. Oh, they went to six. Oh boy, I'm already winning. It's already happened. We're two other zero zero. Interesting. So blue red got it. Where are all my two drops? I got coiling oracle. I got elvish visionary. I got sylvan ranger. I got edge of autumn. And I don't have any of them in my hand. I never want to play this before turn six. <laughs> I think it's, I think the risk of it dying is just so much worse. Like them having to kill two scoot swarms is just so much 
better than killing your Scoot Swarm and then leaving you with a 1-1. One, one. Ooh, I like that. Should we play around Force Spike? I don't know, probably not. Okay, couldn't play around that, so that's fine. I'm not too consigned. I, I always wait to use these till the last minute. If I have a forest or an island, I will definitely play the forest or the island first. Um, now we're going to play around for Spike because... <sighs> yep, bounce your stupid little bird. I said bounce it. Get the fuck out, weird bird. <laughs> right, same logic as Packard, pretty much. Where, like, getting to activate it one time is just so much better than hoping it lives. Just crossing those fingers. This is my borderland or angel. Let's go get an island and put it into play. Six man is also the sweet spot for all of these cards, so. Oh god, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh. Oh Jesus. Oh well. We've had a bad day. For some reason I thought it was only plus X plus zero. I don't know why I thought that, but. So this isn't a mill card. This is definitely, well, I'm glad we have a lot of our top end here. Okay. Okay. I understand. This guy got haste? With fl oh God, it does get haste. That's rude. Um, I think because it gets haste, we're definitely going to, uh, like spitting image doesn't do anything. I think we're going to scoot swarm here. We don't have to get anything back. Play a little scooty tooty. Play this. Play this. Okay. I mean, realistically, this is five. If they hit this like three times and it's like three drop, three drop, three drop. I guess we're still not dead. Okay. Two, plus two, plus two. Got it. I mean, it, it's not a great use of mana unless you're winning on the spot. Yeah, forest. Sweet. Okay. So now you have one mana up. And if we hit a land, like, foreigners has to just be bananas, right? One, two, three, four, five, 12, 30, 40, 50, 60. It's, it's actually exactsies if they don't have anything here and we hit a land. Land. Oh, God, we're so good at this game. No, definitely don't cast you. It's still eight mana, isn't it? Hmm. Well, <laughs> why do I keep thinking it's seven? <laughs> I constantly think it's seven lands. Good grief, man. One day. One day I'll figure it out. I mean, we can kill the Sarkon. Does that... They just have to get lucky with this guy? I guess we can spitting image this. Yeah, that seems fine. That keeps us alive, right? I'm going to send all its Archon. If they kill the 2-2, two, two, it's... <laughs> Double job birthday. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to go Sarkon here. I feel like they got a one-mana removal spell. Okay. Copy this stupid idiot bird. What a waste, man. Well, I will block. 
I just don't want to get I just don't want to get killed by Mind Shrieker. Like it just feels bad. <laughs> Okie dokie. Yeah, we're gonna block here. Play something. Really? Oh man, they gave it to me. They gave it to me. Look at all my bugs. Get them. Big, 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 big. Negative six. My dumb brain from yesterday must have been contagious. Remember that time you were just mentioning a bunch of different, you're like, do this. And I'm like, I can't. And you're like, do this. And I'm like, if I do that, I die. And you're like, what about this? And I'm like, Josh, you got to just stop. You need help. Take reverse engineer out. Mortar pod seems fine. Like it kills, it deals the damage to a planeswalker and it kills mind shrieker. Oh, I like this hand. I like this hand because we can go edge of autumn into migration path, and that gives us so much mana. I also really like our deck. This deck has been fun. So was our deck from yesterday, though, our blink deck. Oh, they mold to six again? God. Just can't win. Oh, what up, Grandma? You can find out what a Nega Cube is right there. Foretold. Well, all things foretold. Oh, that's good. Play this. Cast Edgy Boy. Let's get another island. Next turn we can migration path? Hmm. Or alternatively, we can we can risk Scoot Scoot Swarm and then play it Migration Path after that. That could be good, depending on. I think that's actually I like that better. I don't have any reading glasses. Be a doll and fetch them. Oh dear. Oh dear. I think we're gonna do it. I think we're going to yield scouts. Oh, man, they just snapped off quench like it wasn't even a thing. Oh, really? Okay. Well, okay. That's fine. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I kind of want to bounce this just because it's a thing to do. I mean, alternative, we can play migration migration path. The next turn, play scholar. Copy migration path for another two lands. Yeah, I don't really care about this right now. I might actually keep the the land in hand. Because if we draw a land, we can just play it. Actually, I guess it works the same way, right? But if they play something cool and we just want a spitting image and spitting image again, I don't know. I don't think it matters really. Like seven's all we need and we can get that next turn, so. Man, I feel like this would have been a really sweet Arcbound Ravager. This would have been a really sweet Scoot Swarm, uh, match because <laughs> man it would have been like two more scoot swarms there then we can put counters on all of them um let's play exclusion mage we'll bounce the thopter token which means i assume they'll put it on oh they didn't sack it well that is surprising Sh 
chicken tenders in my brain. I like a Varric's blade wing that is not kicked. <laughs> that is okay with me. Oh, I have so many things that copy other things. Oh boy. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, it seems almost wasteful, but I kind of want to spinning image the exclusion mage, just bounce the Varric so we can get in for some damage. Actually, I mean, like, again, it doesn't do much. We can just Scholar for here and cast Migration Path, I guess. That seems better. Um, cast any number of these. I'll cast this one. Let's get two more lands out of the deck. Because now we have five, six, seven, eight, nine lands. So next turn we can play multiple things, including, like, Clever Impersonator into Ridgecale Tusker. Plus it's a five five, so like, <laughs> like it just gets through the barracks anyway. Hammer gets plus three plus oh as long as it's legendary. But otherwise, you have two and a tap to unattach it. That's expensive, right? It's two to equip, two to activate, and then it bounces to your hand, so you have to pay two more to equip it. So it's basically like a six mana cycle. Oh, double Tusker also seems good. Yeah, let's double Tusker. Ridgy boy. Another Ridgy boy. Now all my creatures are at least 4-4, four, four, and that's pretty good. Well, except for the 3-3, the three, three, I guess, but other than that. All four fours. They also could have funneled the red into the Graven Cairns to equip this. To the Varrocks would have been nice, because then you could block here. Oh, I think they noticed. Oh, that was three minutes ago, though. Maybe they didn't. I don't actually know when that was. They played a Graven Cairns, cast a Varix. I don't know what the misplay was there. Happy Chicken Sunday. Oh, good times. Another trophy. This keep has been fun. And Team J Bros got seven, so we're catching up. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're going to open this treasure chest. Please consider subscribing or following if you enjoy the content. It's a great way to support the channel. Head on over to twitch.tv. Oh, 124 play points. That's pretty good. That's a free draft as far as I'm concerned. And uh, what are these guys? Let's open all of these three at the same time. One reciprocate. Couldn't even tell you what that did right now. One swamp, two swamp. These swamps are pretty sweet, but I have no idea what they're from. Someone will tell me, I'm sure. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.